should be live. So Alice, if you wanna go ahead and start working on sharing your screen while I get us started. So we wanna welcome everybody today to um, our session um, that I'm gonna just turn over to our, our, our speakers, Chris, Alice, and Mark, and um, let you guys go. Um, I'm gonna be monitoring the Slack channel, but um, we're gonna save the questions until the end and I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera and my sound off and turn it over to you guys. <laughs> okay and I'll be I'll be quiet. Okay and I'll I'll cue you. Unless I'm spoken to. <laughs> Everybody that's watching this um, either in person or virtually understands that technology doesn't always cooperate with us but and we have not, you know, in all full disclosure done anything like this before but um, we presented but we're <sighs> So welcome to the view from the map, past, present, and what's next. Okay, Chris, uh, what's on the screen right now is a picture of Chris sitting up in a chair, uh, like a camp chair. Uh, he's wearing a red, orange um, shade, button down shirt, long sleeve, and brown pants. So you can introduce yourself. Mm. Did you turn your speech on? Mm. We should be hearing his communication software right now. You shouldn't need to share your screen. Welcome to our session today. My name is Chris Hughes. I am a white man in my mid 40s. I am laying down on my side and have a switch at my head that I use with Toby Communicator 5 software on a Windows computer. Okay, and there's two pictures on this slide. One of Chris outside in his camp chair. He's wearing a plaid gray and um, blue shirt. Um, and there's also a picture I of- I have his cerebral palsy, Ron. but I am very intelligent. I raise my arm to answer yes and shake my head to answer no. Sometimes I make sounds too. I am 46 years old and am a single switch user. Hmm. I can also use my head to work a mouse. I use he him pronouns. I live with my mom and dad. So we have on this screen is a picture of the mountain that Chris lives near. Um, he's almost to the top. Um, it's kind of summerish where things are not quite so green. You think the mountain. I live on top of White Oak Mountain in Campbell County, Tennessee. I have lived there all my life. There's a train, a freight train going through and uh, there's a little stream, a uh, nice, little, nice little scene there. Um, and on this slide that Chris just read where he lives, um, White Oak Mountain, there's a one photo of a road that's kind of windy. This one has guardrail. Uh, not every road going up to Chris's house, every side of the road has a guardrail. Um, it's two lanes and a little map to show that Campbell County borders Kentucky um, in between Scott and, Can and Claiborne County uh, and Union, kind of in the middle there. And south of Campbell County is Anderson County, just so everyone has an idea of how rural um, the area is where Chris is. Okay, and how can they find you? So we have on this slide, we have various um, and you'll have the links in the PowerPoint or the PDF. So how can they get in touch with you? You go on my website to learn about me or Facebook or email. Okay. We may have to do that, the email or Facebook for uh, questions. All right, Mark, um, there's a, a picture of Mark, but I'm gonna let him describe himself. Oh. <laughs> So, Mark, you need to unmute yourself. Handsome gentleman with uh, wearing glasses, uh, 
brownish hair, white beard, uh, mostly bald. I use he, uh, him pronouns. I'm from suburban New York, but I live in Kentucky and I taught for many years uh, high school math and German in, in Tennessee. I became acquainted with nonverbal children as a counselor at a camp for children with disabilities uh, during my college summers. I'm retired from teaching. Currently, I'm establishing a butterfly garden and studying ancient Egyptian hier hieroglyphs by Zoom. And also helping Chris. <laughs> that didn't make it on that slide. Um, I'm Alice Wershing. There's a, a lovely picture of me. Um, I use she and her pronouns. Uh, I'm originally from Illinois, but I've lived and worked in um, Tennessee, Virginia, California, and then back to Tennessee. I'm a RESNA certified assistive technology practitioner and an IAAP accessibility specialist for competencies. Um, I really love working with any kind of literacy or communication. I'm currently um, the assistive technology specialist at the local community college um, where I do the assistive technology training for students in alternate format. Um, I have too many interests and I'm also a sibling and a mom. <laughs> so our goals for today. Chris, you want to tell a little bit about what you think the goals are? Today I will tell my story about learning and communicating and about how I use ASC as an adult. When I was a little boy, I would think of what I wanted to do when I grew up. Okay, hold on just a second. Um, so we're also going to talk a little bit about um, what comes next after school. Mark, you and I will talk a little bit about that, but Chris will too. Um, and about what Mark and I do in terms of supporting Chris as an AAC user to continue to increase their literacy and communication abilities, especially after school, which is, has been a while now for Chris. Um, and then hopefully in the chat or in the Slack channel, you can be sharing your experiences and ideas um, as you listen to um, Chris's story. Um, anything that you've been doing or you think that um, would work for Chris, um, there's a lot of challenges. Okay. So um, you talked about uh, being a, a young boy, right? This has got a picture of Chris when he was young, before I met him, sitting in a supported sitting device, cross-legged with his arms extended down, his hands down in his lap. No idea how old you were there, but your mother would know. So, um, do you want to talk about the, the next part of this where? Um, how you communicated with people when you were younger? Mm. Mm. When I was a little boy, I would think of what I wanted to do when I grew up. So the text on this slide says, um, it was hard for you to communicate, right? When you were young. <sighs> yeah. And only your mom could understand you. She was initially. <sighs> I'm sure we could have a whole session on all that. Um, okay, you wanna talk about your first school? Uh. Mark was my teacher in high school. He taught me German and showed me how to play chess. He said he worked hard to teach me whatever I needed to know, but he couldn't. So what we have on this screen is a picture of um, Chris and his mom in, in their car. Mom's in the driver's seat, um, looking out the window. Um, Chris is looking out over at Mark and uh, Mark is standing in between the 
uh, open door of the car. So the car door is open. Um, next Today to I will tell my story about learning and communicating and about how I use a C as an adult. Chris uh, uh, participated in my German class uh, and he had uh, on his uh, light talker, he had some uh, phrases that I programmed in German. Uh, this is a picture of the German club uh, and uh, we went Christmas caroling at the nurse, nursing home in the town where it is. And the picture is uh, a picture of a German Santa Claus in the center and a group of students, uh, parents, and teachers. And Chris is seated in a wheelchair uh, in front, uh, surrounded by lovely young ladies. Thank you. 1993, just yesterday. Ew. Yeah. Okay. So how about, um, how did we meet, Chris? You can get to the button about your switch. Ugh. Yeah, okay. When Alice met me, we were working on a switch to drive my wheelchair. She asked me, how do you say yes and no? She says, today it was so long ago, she can't remember what we talked about. But she knew that I had a lot to say. Soon after that, she started coming to my school. So Chris, do you want to show how you say yes to when you answer a question? Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. You so sometimes spoke, you make a little sound uh, to indicate yes, which comes in handy when we have communication issues on Zoom. And how about, how about no? Thanks. Okay, so this is where I kind of came in just yeah. yesterday again. I want to talk about the device you had when we met. Mm. Are you getting fancy? You're using it in your hand. <laughs> I went to school, but the teachers there could not teach me all I needed to know. They thought that I couldn't learn to write or read. But I met Alice and she knew that I could learn and she taught me how to read and spell words with my computer. I am a single switch user and I can use my head to work a mouse. Alice helped me learn how to use my computer. I have a device, but it only scanned icons one at a time and there were 128. Alice wanted me to try scanning on my computer and she had to show me that I could have groups instead. I can imagine I said scanning and he went, uh-uh. Uh, Mark, do you uh, have any oh. comments? hear about the light talker. Oh, I didn't spend much time with it. Well, uh, Chris, Chris, uh, when I first met him in the hallway, he, I realized that he was somebody who had something to say uh, because I'd worked with, uh, with kids like Chris uh, when I was in my college days. Uh, and so he could answer yes or no. Uh, and, it was kind of a game of 20 questions. Uh, I might add that he's having a little problem today because the uh, this keyboard for, for his scan takes up most of the computer screen. So Alice is having to clue him in what's going on. Which is good. It's fine. So um, one picture on this slide is the light talker. This is like the Smithsonian Guide to Assistive Technology. On the other side is Darcy 2, that was the connector. So when Chris wanted to be connected to a computer in order to interface between the light talker and the, Dar and the computer, we oh. had up to Darcy. And I don't remember that we used this much um, because we moved on pretty quickly from, from this. So um, on this screen, we have a picture of the um, old high school building which I vaguely remember, um, and an old Macintosh with a, a computer 
and the monitor stacked together, nothing like we see today and the attached keyboard. You wanna talk about high school? I went to class with a computer, but it wasn't set up for me to use. And then on this slide, we have the newer high school. I've been there a long time. Um, and basically it's, it, the old one was laid out more like a, a brick building with two different sections. This one is pretty modern um, today in terms of a kind of a sprawling campus with one set of buildings in a row and then an entrance. And then it looks like maybe the gym or the auditorium is in the back. So you went here, right? Mm. And and this is where um, there was the beginning of a discussion, wasn't there, Chris, about you going mm. to, to the center? Okay. So you want to talk about that? That attack? Mm. I stopped going to high school. Dash dash dash. And that's when I met Alice and she could help me. At first, I was very scared that I couldn't learn what she was going to teach me. Now I know she can help me. And a lot of the phrases that are on the slides are from previous presentations and phrases that were already in the, the software. So on this slide, we have a picture of the old Mercury, which was a uh, communication device that ran on a Macintosh system. And then a picture of Chris sitting up in his power chair um, with the Mercury mounted and in front of him at eye level. And then a switch that was designed by a person in California named Rick Flanagan, who I've lost touch with. Um, his gooseneck was more sturdy, didn't get uh, bumped out of place and um, he had designed this uh, like a wobble switch with a, a pin on it and a fairly mm -hmm. flexible ball. So we had the mercury and um, two pictures here. One is from the old talk boards uh -huh. and the other's from discover switch. Uh -huh. So one's a scanning grid. Well, they're both scanning grids, but two different pieces of software. So what did you think about learning to spell? Uh, we uh, titled our article about it. Just give me words. So you can find that one. Um. Um. And it's my fault that it's taking up the whole screen. First, I oh. only want words. Alice set up boards, but I couldn't have a conversation. I was scared I couldn't learn to spell or read. We test drove those boards in, in a group setting and found out very quickly that what was there wasn't really conducive to conversation. They had a lot of he had a lot of phrases, but not, you know, in terms of uh, an unscripted conversation. So then we added some more stuff, didn't we, Chris? Mm. Um, the picture here is the old Discover switch. Those of you that have been doing this as long as I have, um, that interfaced with the uh, with the computer and had those scanning the scanning software built in. Anybody knows of something very similar that's out there? I haven't been able to find a replacement. So we added some more tools, didn't we? Um, yeah, co writer. When you started thinking that you might want to learn to spell Netscape Navigator, of course, that was back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Now, sort of, um, and then IntelliTools, 
some Don Johnston software, and KidPix. We're going to explore Tux Paint. It's free. Okay, how about Camp? What happened with Camp? We went for the Neil Youngbridge School Camp, where I was a mentor for the rest of the students. Alice was also there. My dad went with me. My parents have spent my lifetime giving me a good quality of life. The love my parents has for me and the determination Alice had to teach me is the reason I can talk to you today. So this, the camp is no longer happening, but the bridge school is still very much in, in place. Um, if you're looking at the slide deck, there'll be some notes in the slides. And if you're um, getting the PDF, there'll also be some notes. Um, we switched to another device called the Synergy Mac, which was really similar to the, um, the Mercury, um, was made by a proprietary company, secondary company, and we had lots of technical issues with it, didn't we, Chris? So you want to talk about um, what happened after high school? About your devices? I had not mattered of communication in high school. When I graduated, the school took the device when I left the school. I wanted something to use, so I went to Alice for help. She gave me an old computer. I had a hard time using it because I had to use a light on my head to make it work. I took a web design class on the internet and I learned a lot. My mom thought it might be too hard for me, but I showed her that I could learn new things. I enjoyed the class and would like to learn more. So on this slide, we have a picture of the old tracker. It's like the head mouse that most of us know today, where, um, where you can wear a dot on your, on your head or have some sort of head mouse. Um, this one Chris used with his switch. And again, our friendly older Macintosh computer. Um. Um, and we had a loaner program and we had a refurbished giveaway program as the State Tech Act. So that's how we were able to get Chris a computer. So what about um, presentations? I started presenting with Alice at the T Center and for other groups. Mm -hmm. We went to Birmingham, Alabama, we went to Washington, D.C. David Coppenhaver and Karen Erickson asked us to write my story for a book. Alice helped write a lot then. Maybe we can do an update someday, Alice. And I wrote a chapter in a book called Just Give Me Words. The book is titled Waves of Words. Augmented communicators read and write. You will know about my life and the many obstacles in my way that I have overcome after we started writing my chapter. I was scared that I would not be able to read and write like I should. The other kids seemed like they were doing better than me. Even though I struggled with help from Alice, I overcame my fear. A lot has changed since we started writing my chapter. I am able to get on in Facebook and websites and have things read aloud and browse by myself. I am able to set up my own web pages. Since I have learned how to write, I can communicate better with other people. And then the book references here, um, it is still available. I think it's like $15 on the Isaac website. And that's the presentation that we did where oh, the computer just really failed us. It kept repeating things and not doing what it was supposed to. Do you want to talk about your life on the mountain, about Charlie? Mm. E. Charlie Daniels. The music. I know Charlie Daniels. I sit on the stage when he comes around. 
I have a lot of photos about us on the wall in my room. I first met Charlie at a Ford Motor Company oh, sponsored concert in Oak Ridge that I attended with my cousin Laura. I didn't want to go, but Laura made me go with her. Hello. We went backstage to see Charlie after the concert. And on this slide, we have a, a bunch of the things that Charlie gave to Chris over the years. He gave you a violin fiddle, didn't he? Yeah, with a bow. Um, and we did go backstage. You'll see in the notes that Charlie um, and Chris had a, a really interesting long distance friendship, but Charlie was a true friend and a true gentleman and, and took the time with us and with Chris. And it was, it was um, an amazing experience to get to know Charlie. And what else do you do on the mountain? I hope you're driving this boat with somebody sitting next to you. I don't know where this picture came from. But yeah. I have a good family. I like to go camping. I like country and gospel music. Because of my parents, I have gotten to go more places than most people will in a lifetime. I have gone to Washington, D.C. for the Isaac Conference on Communication Devices where I present. I've also been to Alabama, Florida to Disney World and California three or four summers in a row. My dad took me and he also took me to the bathroom on the plane that was an experience. Sorry. So, um, yeah, that was an experience. Flying with, flying with Chris was definitely an experience and in another presentation, maybe you'll have more stories. Um, Mark, do you want to talk about finding the friends? Sure. Uh, yeah, Chris wanted to be able to talk with uh, other people with disabilities. And we looked around uh, on the internet, had some trouble finding uh, uh, the right website. Alice sent us some web websites and after uh, we had to chase a couple of broken links for other places, but we found uh, the Outsiders Club in Great Britain. Uh, and because of COVID-19, they were meeting by Zoom. They, in normal times, whatever, whatever those are anymore, but uh, in normal times before, they would uh, meet for lunches and such. Uh, and a uh, very friendly group. And so, uh, yeah, he... We got him signed up finally for that. And yeah, I'll let Chris tell you about it. Yeah, Chris, was had you done Zoom before you did Outsiders? I didn't know about Zoom until I met Outsider. I never used Zoom when I get into Outsiders. I don't like one hour limit. I didn't know they helped me. I was bored that because I didn't know the people could. Today I know them will come get me when I left next time. I love them. Every Friday we have a meeting on Zoom. Yes, we had an interesting time there because Chris got in and as he said, he didn't know anybody. And he said, I want out. I said, Chris, are you sure? Don't burn your bridges. And somebody had some matches and burned some bridges. <coughs> And we had to get back in and now he's enjoying it. Mm. So what we have on the screen here is the, I guess that's the actual clubhouse, is it? Mark, you yeah, and Chris put yeah. that slide together. So yeah. yeah, so it looks pretty fancy. It's like one of those big Tudor homes with lots of um, chimneys. You know, if you watch Downton Abbey or you've been to Europe, you see a lot of those. It's got nice grounds and gardens and a little gazebo. Maybe we'll get to go visit someday. So what are you up to these days? What kinds of things uh, do you do? Um, and I you know, do these, all of these every day, but. Mm. I go to Outsiders and webinars on Zoom. 
I make phone calls with Facita. I'm on Google online with friends. I use DM viewers so Alice can help with my computer. I am working on writing my story in Word. I looked at a new device and need to look at others. Yeah, and that's new, isn't it? Because the laws changed um, apparently for people over 21. So the process is going forward slowly due to, due to COVID. Um, TeamViewer is free. It's if you have done a remote call where someone takes over your computer and does tech support, you've done something like that. Um, it's free for individual use. And it, you know, Chris has to get his code and put it in um, FaceTime, which is how we um, connect up with phone calls. Um, if we need to share screens and things like that, we'll do Zoom, but mostly he's calling on uh, using FaceTime through um, a Google phone number. And what's next for you? I wanted to meet my outsider friends. I want to walk the red carpet at the CMA Awards. I need ice gaze communication because I can work fast and the persons don't leave me when I type slow. Mark, what do you see as being next? <laughs> well, as I talk with Chris, uh, I just want to hear what's going on in his life and how exciting life is in White Oak. Tennessee, uh, and uh, I try and help him with his, uh, his writing and his grammar, uh, and, you know, keeping in mind that he does it, has his own voice, but uh, I want it to be understood by other people, and I'd like to uh, help him learn to use uh, various programs uh, like Paint and PowerPoint. Uh, if I had my camera working, I could show you a train that Chris drew way back in the day on a different uh, program, uh, but uh, something like paint. And uh, he drew, drew a train, I made it three-dimensional. And I like to keep uh, Alice uh, advised of things that uh, might work better in the scanning. And uh, we're working on finding options for socializing online, uh, such as the uh, AAC uh, in the cloud or, or um, Isaac, I'm sorry, Isaac. Yeah, that's new. Yeah, we just found that one. Yeah, yeah we had a good time uh, on that. So he's going to go do that again for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was great. You just have to keep looking. My list is long, of course. Um, and you know we're, we've been looking at updating the scanning arrays. Um, your mom bought Communicator an update just as COVID hit, um, so we were able to like update some boards. But there was a change in the interface. I had to figure things out um, in terms of using the boards. And Chris can't really edit those boards, so trying to figure out um, what board sets. I spent some time looking at things today. Navigation, maybe using more keyboard commands um, on the on the board sets to be able to get around. But I did find some new commands in Communicator today. Um, with the Discover uh, Switch, you be able to set markers and jump to places on the screen. And so, um, Chris, you may be able to show your your radar mouse here in a minute if you can share your your screen. Um, board Maker may work on the the tensings. Um, in, and verbs, but I also found some commands in Communicator today I didn't know about. Again, if anyone has any good ideas, I learned from um, Kelly and Beth's keynote um, in the pre-conference that what we're missing, I knew something was missing, is that language piece, that piece you used to have, Chris, for scanning word power and some grammar. Um, tech support, you know, you want to, I want Chris, I want you to finish your story, continue to write it. And I'm, I'm always learning something new every day in my job and looking on the web. So whatever I find that works. Um, so what's your takeaway, Chris?
we want people to really take from this. I think the button says takeaways about finding your community. Send questions to me by email or on Facebook, and I will try to answer. So you felt your community was your church and your family mm. and outsiders and these new AAC groups. Um, we did a really cool um, webinar with oh. Bob Williams and Latif and several people mm. that are, are using AAC devices. Um, of course, we hope learning is lifelong. Mm -hmm. And you told me that um, you felt that AAC users really needed a group of, that includes other AAC users, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then time to communicate. And that as an adult, you really need a team of people and funding for updating your technology, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here is our contact information. We wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. I think we've got a, a good while here if there are questions in the Slack channel from our moderator. Um, mm. And there, if you- Yeah, there are uh, two questions. Um, one might be one that might be better by email or Facebook, but I will toss it out there was, it's about, was it difficult to transition between a large variety of devices over the years to change systems over time? That's a good question. That's a really good question. <laughs> Do you want to try and answer it? Um, you could you can write that up with with Mark, or you can let us know. You know, if you want um, one of us to to talk about it. Alice, can you answer that? I can. I can. Yeah, you know, um, we, we all are creatures of habit. So change is hard. Um, it's hard, it was hard for me to transition. You know? and, and it's extremely hard right now because I had, you know, the industry's changed. And what we have available as tools have changed. So we both struggle with that, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that were available before everything went to the cloud. And I'm seeing, I think it's the trend towards eye gaze. I'm seeing very little out there. I've been doing this for almost 35 years. Mm -hmm. And less for single switch users that are needing to control the computer. But um, there are some eye gaze options for Chris that, that we haven't looked at yet that may be an option for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, yeah, it's been hard for both of us, but we just keep looking. And the second question may be a little bit easier, Chris, for you is, do you normally spend your days communicating or working on your computer in your bed or do you have a chair that you also sit in? You have a way to get to your typing board. We didn't program anything in like that. Mark, can you talk about that? Um, Chris <laughs> has a chair which he uh, doesn't usually use when we talk. When we when we talk normally, he's uh, uh, lying on his side as he is now. But you're a part of the day, right? Mm. Like when you when you're when you have your tube feeding. Hope it's mm. okay for me to share that. Um, then you have to sit up for a while, don't you? Mm. Yeah. That was a yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, 
Other questions? Let me look in the Slack channel. You want to share your screen, Chris, so people can. Yeah, I think people would very much like to see kind of how you're doing things on your end. There's lots of comments about um, as you were show, showing kind of the older devices that it's amazing to see kind of the, the past history of devices um, for sure. But I think people would definitely be interested if you if you can share your screen to see how you're doing it on your end. Mm. Mm. Just take your time. Mm. Okay, you want to go to the home, the the button. On mm. the yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a new board. Um, we didn't want to have to scan through phrases. There is There are phrase prediction options in um, Communicator 5. I spent a little bit of time. I found a different manual than I've been looking at, so... I've got some ideas about how maybe you can get to your phrases a little bit easier. There's some command about going to an actual phrase category. As you can, everybody can see how slow, it's the slowest input method to scan. And the other question out there is about what other things that you guys would like to be able to do that you don't yet not have an answer for or aren't sure what direction to go in. I'll let you keep working, Chris. Um, for, for me, it's figuring out a more efficient way. We're still, we're just play, beginning to play now with uh, your choices. Uh, Are you having trouble getting in? Uh, okay. Um, I can stop sharing and are you are you not able to get back to the home button? Mm -hmm. Okay, did you go to the very end of all the phrases? Mm -hmm. And you hit home and it didn't go. Stop. I'll stop sharing the slides. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll bring up your board set. And you keep working to see if you can get to it because I'd much rather have people see you do it. So see if you can get there eventually. You may have to go back all the way to that first board. Yes. Method is switch. And then I wish I'd done that. And then user setup. So and this isn't quite exactly everything, but it, it is most of what he has right now. Facebook, edit phrase categories. Share. Yeah, and we've we've changed this so that there aren't at this this number of choices. My text files. Do my mouse. Um, so there's fewer choices. You may be able to get there eventually. Um, mm. No, are you having trouble? Mm. Okay. So right now we've cut down the number of choices. Um, and this particular board here, that again. I have it up. I'm not sure why. Um, it's hiding. Sounds like you're almost there. No, <laughs> okay. All right, let me see why I can't get my. 
Okay. So add um, new category. Scroll down. This is one of the ones that we changed for this presentation. So um, I am having trouble with my single switch yeah. <laughs> talking may take longer than usual so he has various um phrase categories scroll, that can get restricted. scroll down and a lot of um family what we did and church presentation um and he has other scroll down places things that he can about me use to actually write without having to Right by spelling. Um, let me see if I can get your spelling board up. Okay, so this is an intermediary board right here. Um, that gets him back to his home page. Um, he he has, yeah. so this is his um, typing board. And we added some things here because um, sometimes, Chris, you had said that when you, when you type something, R. Um, and now I get choices. It's sometimes hard for you to read those choices, right? So we we turned and we made a cue so that you could turn things on and off so that this will read. And then right. Chris Why? can turn it off. Because one of the things that Beth and, and um, Kelly really talked about was making sure that you have in total control of everything. So, and here's our phrases, phrases. again. Um, and then he always has the ability to close and get back. Um, we're still working with some small. things for double clicking. Exit. And um, I'm trying, Mark, to get you a triple click. I'm not sure it's going to work. I played a little bit today. Exit. And to ooh, have settings. Your settings um, and change all your settings. Chris, I learned some new stuff about this today. So, um, and, and I wish we had more time. <laughs> but, yeah, better. Alice, I'm curious, what do you want to have the triple click function for? Mark, you want to talk about that? Uh, I'm a big fan of copy and paste. And mm. I found that uh, when I want to copy a whole paragraph, uh, if I just triple click on it, uh, it copies the entire paragraph and, and uh, I don't have to, to uh, go to the beginning and then drag the cursor to the end. And for me, that's a minor inconvenience. For Chris, it would be really great if he could just triple click and, um, and uh, copy, uh, copy and paste uh, much faster. Mm -hmm. And that came up when you just started writing in Word, right, mm -hmm. Chris, with the co-writer extension. So that's a relatively new need, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Other questions? And, and I asked that question partially because I know our community is very, very smart at things that uh, sometimes I don't know the, the answer to. So often, um, you know, being able to toss the question out in a way that, that gives people insight into the why, what we're looking at trying to do might, um, might propel some folks to be able to say, oh, I've done this before for that um, and it's been easier. So I, there are a couple of people typing in the Slack channel, so I'm gonna give them a minute, but I did have a question as to whether you've ever looked at a frequency scanning keyboard versus the QWERTY. Yes, um, one of those old boards that's still on his um, homepage has that in it. And I wanna rearrange the, and I also wanna, we've talked about Chris and I just haven't had the time really to do it. Uh, uh, we had to take some of the original communicator boards and redo the group scanning because there were too many options. And then, you know, it just takes a little bit of time to regroup everything and have things go in the right direction. So I think mm -hmm. we can cut down the number of choices for your letters as well as do that ETA scan again. Mm -hmm. Okay, move the keys around. And there was a question about how um, seeing how Chris's yes and no works again, because I guess he wasn't showing oh, yeah. on the screen for the whole time when that was happening. Oh, sure. So Chris, if you were going to answer yes to um, the question, yeah, raise your arm, right? It's a little bit more pronounced when you're actually sitting up. It's more <laughs> about like the whole thing. That's, the, that's what I saw that very first day we met. 
And then how do you, how would you answer no? Just a head shake. That was my first, you know, show me, do you, do you know how to say yes? Mm. Do you know how to say no? And I, I know we talked for a good while that day, but it was like, oh, have you got a device? Yeah. Not really, you know. Oh. It was a lot of 20 questions back in the day, wasn't it, Mark? Mm. Yes, indeed. Any other? So I know you talked about your what's next, Chris, but, you know, is there some other I'd really like to that you um, haven't kind of talked about in terms of your technology? Or Alice, if you know. You talked her. about eye gaze. I mean, that's definitely something that's been tried. Yeah. Um, Control Bionics was the last, yeah. the, the main trial. Yeah. Um, nothing with Toby yet. And then I think um, somebody in the state office um, knows of a system that calibrates well inside line. So I don't know. You'd like to have something that you can take with you when you go out, even if it's on the camp chair. Am I am I right about that? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a really good way, but your parents, I mean, it's amazing <laughs> what um, the conversations they have sometimes, um, and not not necessarily using your your software, right? You guys yeah. 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 So this is more of a comment than a question, but the presentation has this person thinking about how inaccessible about 98% of websites and online content is for disabled people, particularly those using assistive technology. And they added, Chris, I'm assuming you are a main decision maker for changes to the setup of your various assistive devices, which has kind of come through today, but I'm sure he has a powerful voice in whether he wants something or doesn't like something on there, Chris. Yep. Yeah, and, and sometimes it takes a while to like, no, go back to that button, which button, you know, <laughs> the phone uh, with FaceTime. So it's really hard to see. Sometimes I'll be on FaceTime mm -hmm. on the computer, but um, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. And basically the conversation is like, fix the button so that it'll, you know, and change, change it so that, you know, no, move it here. It's, yeah, it's pretty convoluted sometimes, but it, we eventually get there. Um, no, I don't want that button there. I want it, you know, okay, you want it here, here, here. Um, and then, Mark, you've done the same in terms of writing, giving choices for how to phrase things and how to say things. But yeah. I, I think that's needed less and less. I mean, that Charlie Daniels slide you wrote years ago and I think you had yeah. oh, people were suggesting things. You, yeah, yeah that was, that's like a really old writing sample. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's a matter of reading more. Um, I found a um, program that CAST has done called Clusive that looks um, like a good opportunity to do some, some reading and you can put, put your own stuff in. Chris doesn't have a Bookshare account. Um, I have one at the college and absolutely um, navigating around the web for um, individuals using assistive technology. Um, that's what I've been doing for the last eight and a half years of my career here at Pellissippi, um, the community college I'm at and um, also getting alternate format books. So um, you know, we still have things to do, but I was in a session the other day and I think we're seeing more and more jobs out there related to accessibility for web and also um, more companies thinking about their websites. I think the Domino's pizza case finally got settled today. So that's been a long time coming. So um, you'll have the slide deck. I know we're a little over time here. Um, Chris, you'd love to get some, some email, wouldn't you? And then, um, then the writing really begins. More vocabulary, more spelling. Hmm? Fantastic. Thank you so much for 
all three of you um, sharing your information. Um, and I know there were some, there's some great discussions in the Slack channel and I did share again, the link to the handout there as well. Okay. Um, so okay. hopefully folks will reach out with, uh, with great. more, more questions. Great. And will people that are viewing later be able to ask questions as well? They'll have Absolutely. They'll they'll still see our, our contact information. Absolutely, absolutely. So they'll have access to all your contact information as well as, um, as, well as the handouts. All right. Well, thank you all so much for spending the, the time with us, um, either live or recorded. And uh, we hope to hear from you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.